Yeah. Hello, guys. It's Kene once again, and today I will be continuing my discussion of date time in Python. So, you know, there are times when, you know, we find the need to use dates and time in our program. And Python provides us a very um, useful module and other supporting modules, you know, to work with dates and time. Right, so I'm going to just jump right into it and um, start with sharing my screen. So last, the last um, video on Python um, date time, I showed us how to create date time objects, if you recall. So I encourage you to go back to that video. And guys, please do make sure you hit the subscribe button, you know, um, on my channel. Right. So, guys, let's proceed with that. Now, the thing is, the date time class has certain attributes which we can retrieve, you know, from the date time object. And, um, you know, we could have the year, the month, the day. Let's just look at it in actual. So, guys, first, I'm going to create a daytime object that is time zone aware. So, how do I do that? I'm going to make use of the date util module. And in that module, in that module, I'll get the TZ class. So, guys, let me create a time zone object. Time zone object, just like that. And with that, I just grab my class and get tz just like that and i provide a string which is the time zone and the time zone should be okay let's say africa lagos just like that okay so that's the time zone object okay now i'm going to create the date time object that is set in this time zone, Africa, Lagos. So to do that, I'll just get my date time module and date time class and just get the time now. I just need the time now, right? And for parameter, I'll just provide the date time, the, what's it called, time zone object. So the time zone, time zone object there is TZO. Right, so guys, let's just see what that gives us. Okay, so we see the daytime object here with the parameters. So I can grab any of the parameters there, say the year, for example, and we can see that it's 2023. And I can also get the time zone info, TZ info, which is not going to be now. You know, we see that it's Africa language. Okay, so that's how you get the attributes of the daytime class. Could also be the month. Let's see, guys, if we can get the month. That's four, representing April, and the day. So yeah, so that's it, guys. Now let's go to getting strings, converting our daytime object to string object. So let's see how that can be done. So in other words, I don't really need a daytime object, but from a daytime object, can I get a string? It's possible. And there are three methods, you know, we can use in Python to actualize the goal of getting strings from daytime objects. So let's see, guys. First, I'm going to use the ISO format. The ISO format is like the standard for representing daytime. So it's a world recognized standard for recognizing data and would we'll see that, you know, the, the pattern is the date part with a T normally, a T, capital T, and then the time part. Something like year, just month, day, with T, and just using the first letters, the hour, the minute, and the seconds, just something like that. So that's the ISO format. Let's see that in action, guys. I'll create a date time object. And I'll just 
get my date time class. So for this, I have imported the date time class from the module. So I don't need to reference the module anymore, like explicitly. So date time and get now. So that's just what it is. And I don't need to make it time zone aware because you know I I'm not actually um I'm not particular about the time zone at this point. I just want to get a string from time. Right. So guys, let's see. That's my daytime object at this time. And what do I want to do? Now I want to get a string. So for the first I will grab my daytime object and call the ISO format method on it. ISO format. And that's all that I need to, it's ISO guys, ISO format. So it already knows the format. So like it's a standard format. I don't need to provide directives, you know, to get the string. And let's see what we have there. So we see the ISO string there created from the daytime object here. So that's it. So this is the string, the ISO format string from the daytime object. And not just that, we can also use the seat time method. For, so using the seat time method gets you the day of the week. That's like the difference here. And then the time is the last element, you know, in the string we get. So let's just see str, another string to hold, another variable to hold the string, daytime object and c time, just like that. And let's see guys. So I'm just going to use the print to get all and print again. Right, so let's see. So we see the string from C time. Okay, so this is the day, the day of the week and the month of the year. The year is the last entity there. Okay, so that's it, guys. Now, what about STRF time? String from time. That's what it means in essence, string from time. So getting a string from time, I'll say, okay. Third variable, grab my date time object and call strf time. You know, just like that. Now for this, I need to um, give directives to Python. Okay, so I want this format for the string. So the string needs to be formatted. Okay, and I'll simply do that by saying, okay, I need the year with the percentage sign, guys the directive, then the month, the month, the percentage sign first, always have the percentage sign there. Now I need the dash here, very important guys, the dash, okay? Then the dash, I would grab the day, just like that, okay? Let's print the third string there. And voila, right. So we see that the string gets created, okay? In this format, in this format. We can even include the time, just that I, I didn't put it. So let me just do that right away. For the time, space, hour, colon, capital M for minutes, colon, and capital S for seconds. Right, 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 guys. I hope everything is in order and voila. Okay, so that's the, that's the, the string we get from calling the string F time, strf time method. I hope you understand, guys. So these are three ways of getting creating strings out of daytime object. You know, sometimes you want to just store the string in a database and later recall it for use, you know, whatever. Now guys, let's go to something else. 
let's understand. I know I have been using um, the expression that's the time zone aware, time zone naive object. What exactly do these terms mean? Saying that an object is time zone naive or offset naive, the same thing. We're simply saying that, oh, that object, daytime object, is not set in any um, time location, geographical location. It's just a time which could be in any place, right? So it's not it's not tied to any geographical location. That means it's time zone naive. But if it's time zone aware or offset aware, then it's tied to a geographical location. In this case, Lagos, it could even be New York. So the time expressed is as it is obtained in a particular place at that time. So we say that the time is what time zone aware. So those are the two terms we'll look at. Now, guys, having seen the differences between the difference between the two, let's create a naive date time. So to create a naive date time, I'll just either recall, remember, either I use the um, date time constructor or I just use the now method. Let's see, DT, the first one. So I'll just say date time using the module, then get the class, then now. So it's not aware, it's time zone naive. Now you can check by just printing, try to print the TZ info, TZ info for that. And let's see what that gives us. None. So <laughs> there's no time zone. So it's time zone information, TZ info. Doesn't have a time zone. Now let me create another time zone naive object, DT2. And this time, just, I'm just going to use the, the constructor 2023 mm, for that's for April. And I think it should be mm, 12, whatever. And the time, the time it's, I think, um, 10 minutes, whatever, 37, and let's say 35 for seconds. I'm not going to provide microseconds, right? So let's see guys, DT2, it's still known. It's still known, but I can grab other parameters, say the year, and we see that it's 2023. Okay, so that's how we can create um, a time zone naive object. Now, how do I convert a time zone naive object to a time zone aware object that is set that time now to a particular geographical location. How do I do that? Guys, I'm going to make use of two lib um, two modules, the date util module and the PYTZ library, okay, to do that. So the first, um, date util. So I'm going to create a time zone object. So time zone object, TZ class, that's of the date util module and get time zone, get TZ. And what's the time zone I need here? I could see Europe, Eastern, just like that. Okay, so that's the object first of all created and I will get my date time object dt3 which is time zone aware this time around and then take my my dt which is um, naive then just say okay as time as time zone that's it as time zone basically that's a method you can use now I'm going to localize the time to the time zone I created. You remember TZO. So just provided that TZO. Right. So guys, let's see DT3. 
and that's it. We see that there is time zone information. That's one way of making it time zone aware. Okay, so guys, what if I want to use the PYTZ library? How do I do that? So that's also you know very, very simple. I can use a method called localize, localize method when I'm using the PYTZ library. So guys, I'm gonna create time zone object using PYTZ library. So TZ02 and that's PYTZ dot time zone. So that's the method I'm going to use to create the time zone object. Time zone, and what's the time zone? Why don't I get um, Asia? Tokyo. Okay, so just like that, Asia, Tokyo. Then, having created the time zone object, I'm going to localize my DT2, this time zone naive object. I'm going to localize it to Asia, Tokyo. So I'll store it in DT4. Then, guys, it's quite different here now using the PYTZ library. I'm going to use the time zone object, which is TZ02, right? And, and localize it, localize, just like that. Localize it. And what am I going to localize, guys? I'm going to localize the daytime object this time. So the, the daytime object is the parameter for the localize method. So DT2, daytime2. Okay, so which is this one here. So it's been localized. And if I check T, DT4, what does it say? Um, time zone. Oh, guys, the spelling error here. There's no attribute, no attribute team zone. <laughs> so it's actually time zone. Let's get it here. Time zone, guys. Time zone and get it right. Seems a little slow. Okay, so that's it, guys. So we can see um, the time zone aware object, which I created using the PYTZ library. It, it's, it's as easy as that. Using date util, I use the time zone, the date time object, and then called as time zone method on it, giving it the time zone object as a parameter. But using the PYTZ library, I use it for time zone object and then call the localized method on it. And the localized method gets the parameter, which is the date time object. And that way it's localized to the time set by the time zone. So that's it guys. Right, I hope you understand it so far. That's how you convert a daytime naive um, object to a, sorry, a time zone naive object to a time zone aware object. Let's go to something else. Converting time zones to and from UTC. So guys, remember that there is something called universal, coordinated universal time, UTC, which is the world standard, like, modern times used to, um, which serves as a reference against which we can um, relate other time zones, all time zones in the world. So that's the standard. And so if we're talking about time in relation to UTC, so, so that gives us um, a better way of um, comparing time zones, so to say using the UTC, which, you know, in practical terms, it's somewhat like the GMT. So the time, the GMT time is what you would get as the UTC. But guys, there is a difference, right? UTC is world, world acknowledged, world recognized time zone. It's based on the rotation of the earth. So I'm not gonna go 
deep into that. Just understand that it's a world standard for making time relations. Now, how do I get um, a time zone from UTC to some other time zone? So the time zone is in UTC, but I need it to be in, I mean, the date time object is in UTC. I need it to be in some other time zone. So first I'll create my time in UTC. So DT, date time, UTC, something like that. And date time, date time. And now, now, I want to create my time zone now here in UTC. And to do that, I'm just going to use my, uh, let me use the TZ, TZ class. So TZ dot get time zone. That's the parameter and provide it's the time zone. So um, Africa, Africa, Lagos. So th this, um, oh, guys, not Africa, Lagos. I, I need the time as UTC. So it should actually be UTC. Let's not forget. Okay, so let's just be sure, guys, just to be sure. DT, UTC, dot TZ info. Let's see what that parameter holds. Great, so that's UTC. Time zone info is UTC. So I've created my UTC time. Now I want to convert the UTC time to um, Africa, Lagos, right? Lagos time. So DT LA, that's Lagos, just DT LA. So I'll take my UTC time, DT UTC, and simply call as time zone method. Just like that, just like that, guys. And what time zone do I want to set it as? Africa Lagos. So I need a time zone object as the parameter for as time zone. And again, I'll use tz dot get tz as to create the time zone object. And I want Africa Lagos. Okay. So I hope you understand that, guys. So our time now, DTL is actually um, daytime object set in Lagos. That's what it is, right? So let's see. I should just print, print DTLA, simple as that. So we see now it went from UTC time to Lagos time. And if you see, what's the offset? That's the difference, UTC and Lagos. It's one uh, positive, that is eastwards to the east, one hour. It is one hour ahead of UTC. So time in Lagos is one hour ahead of UTC time. Okay, guys, um, just a moment. I need to plug in my battery. Right, so guys, as I was saying, here you have the offsets. Offset simply meaning the difference, you know, between um, time at UTC and time at the particular time zone um, stipulated. So that's it. Right, so that's how you go from UTC to some time zone. Now what about going from the time zone to UTC? So the particular time zone in this case, Africa, Lagos, back to UTC. And now it's the same thing. So we set we set it using the as time zone method. Okay, so it returns a new daytime object that is back to UTC. As simple as that. So um, DT, UTC2, the second daytime object in UTC, right? So I would have the DTLA as time zone as time zone, right? So I'll just say, fine, what do I need? The CZ class and using the TZ class, I would call the CZ class there. I would make use of the um, get TZ 
method cz and cz and this time it's back to it's just u utc that's all that's all we need to do so let's see if that's what gets returned dt ut no utc2 it's just as simple as that okay all right guys so it's back to utc you see it's utc just like you know gmt there's really no difference between utc and utc so no um time difference between the two so africa is back to um, lagos is back to utc so that's how you go from a time zone to utc and utc back to that time zone i hope we understand it guys so I'll, i will just encourage you to have a look at this video you know you may not understand it fully you know by watching it the first time but you know watching it again you get a better understanding of the concept okay now guys what if i want to use some other methods to grab different things or to get different things like the time zone name the time zone name the calendar a tuple that's calling the iso calendar method we get a tuple that contains the um year the week and the weekday right so that's the iso calendar method it gives you a tuple of the year the week and the weekday whereas the iso weekday gives you as integer the diff the the day of the week. And I saw weekday has gives you Monday as one. So it begins from one, right? On Monday. Whereas whereas it's zero for um the weekday. So calling the weekday method and it's a Monday, you get zero as the integer returned. Let's just see these methods in action. So again, I'll create a date time. And uh, this time, just for a change, just for a change, guys, I have this other um, class of the date util module, which I can actually use to create a date time object. Okay, I know I haven't used it before now. It's really, really simple. Like it just makes your work. You don't need to provide directives. You don't need to say, oh, um, Python, I need you to use this format. I need you to recognize this format in creating the date time. It just magically knows kind of what the um, pattern of the date is and it creates a daytime object from it. So guys, just let me get parser, the parser class, and method of the parser class called pass. So it's gonna pass the string to um daytime object. That's what it does basically. So 2023. Now you notice that it's gonna be a string 2023. Now just a dot but which is like um april then the day is 12 whatever right so i have my my um date time object let's see what that gives us right so just like that this is a date time object see how easy it is using the parser class you just pass your string to a date time object and you can even have the the month, I mean the um the time. So it's 10 55. That's the and then let's say 23 the seconds. Just like that. Okay, so that's it. That's my date time object. Okay, so next I want to do guys is to get the TZ name. Now if I call the TZ name. The tz name method, we will notice that there's none, none. 
let's just have a look at it. So print dt dot tz name as a method none. Yeah, because there's no time zone info. Remember, there's no time zone information. I didn't provide any time zone information. Hmm, that's the problem. So can I assign a time zone to it, right? As time zone, as time zone, and say this time tz dot get tz, just like that. It's not going to be a string, sorry, but a string get tz, and I need it to be Africa, Lagos. Okay, so just like that. And let's see, we see that it's calling the tz name method I get West African time. So that's what this returns, the name of the time zone. What about um, ISO calendar? Let's see, or the ISO calendar. And we'll see a triple of the year, the week, and the weekday. So 2023, that's the attribute there. And then 15 is the year week. So we're in week 15 now. And the day is three. That is beginning from Monday. Monday 1, Tuesday to um, Wednesday. Wednesday 3, right? Okay. So, no, guys. Um, it's a Thursday today. So Monday, actually from one, it's the weekday. So one, Monday zero, rather zero, one, two, three. That gives us a Thursday. We need to be careful with, you know, the differences. So that's what you have here, a Thursday and the day of the week is three. Okay, right. Now, what about the ISO weekday? Great. We'll see what that gives us. Just let me grab this, copy and paste. An ISO weekday. ISO weekday, right? System is a little, little bit slow. So here, I have the ISO weekday. And just let me grab this and paste and see what it is for just weekday, not ISO weekday, just the weekday and print. Let's see. Right, guys. So for ISO weekday, it's three. And then for, for the weekday, it is two. So this here begins from zero, right? Monday is zero, Tuesday is one, Wednesday is is two. So, okay, guys, uh, being at home, you know, so I kind of mixed up the day. So it's a Wednesday, yeah, a Wednesday today, right? So it starts zero, Monday, and for the ISO week day, it's um, one for Monday. All right, so guys, let's go to the difference between times. I think I left something out, yeah. Before I get to um, time difference right here, I need to talk about the offset. So what's the difference in time, like difference between a time in a particular time zone and its UTC equivalent, right? So what's the offset really? The duration in essence. Now let's see guys, I'm going to create my time zone and it will be in maybe, yeah, let me just still say Lagos. So no need to create a new one. I will just use this same, this, this Lagos um, date time object, right? And simply 
have the UT, UTC offset method. Now, what does this do? This gives us the duration, duration of time from the time in that time zone to UTC. So it could be negative or positive. So um, eastwards, it gives us a positive value and um, westwards gives us a negative value, just like that. Now, guys, it, it is called on a daytime object that is time zone aware, right? And if I store this in a variable, let me say, call it a time delta, which is what it is. Guys, I may not have spoken about a time delta at length, but remember, it's a class in the um, daytime module. So the time delta is just basically duration of time. It's a duration of time. An object that represents duration of time is considered a time delta. And if you're looking at an offset, it's like that value, right? Which represents the duration between the time in that time zone and its UTC equivalent. So that's a duration. In other words, it's a time delta, right? A time delta object. So let me just uh, print it and I'll see what that gives us. Here it is, guys. Just as I was saying, we see that it's a time delta and it's 3,600, which is one hour. So it's basically a difference of one hour. Remember, time in Lagos it is one hour. In fact, let's see. DTLA. Let me print DTLA. Print it out. We'll see that difference, the offset here. One hour, which is in seconds, 3,600. So that's how you use the UTC offset method, okay? But guys, um, the thing is, how do I actually distinguish between seconds, the attribute seconds, and total seconds method? I mean, if I was going to have TD seconds, TDS, just seconds. So I would say TD, just grab the seconds. Grab the seconds. And let's see. Print. Print TDS. We see that it's 3,600. What if I have another variable and I call it TD total seconds, time delta total seconds, and I call the total seconds method total seconds, and then I print it. Just I can take this off now. Just take this off. Then I print the time total seconds in total seconds, the duration as total seconds. So TD total seconds and we'll see. Yeah, so basically the same. That's because, I mean, it's, it, they are the same one hour difference, right? Eastwards, positive one hour, but Think of it. What if I have time zone that um, lies westward, that is, gives a negative value? That is, it is before the um, time at UTC. So it is reaching UTC, but not up to it, as against time zone that is ahead of UTC, which you know we find here. Lagos is ahead by one hour. But what of a time zone? Let me take, change this to America, New York. Okay. And voila. Guys, now let's see. I have seconds here. And what does it return for America, New York? 
7,200. Now, why are they not the same? I can see different figures. When I use Lagos, 3,600, 3,600. That's just because um, between UTC and Lagos, it's one hour, 3,600 seconds, right? But for this, we see a difference. So what's actually different between seconds and total seconds? Now, the seconds here represents the time returned in the time delta object. The seconds, the time um, you, when you calculate the seconds present in the time delta object, you get that using this attribute, right? Seconds attribute. But for total seconds, you are, we're actually considering the time up to UTC. That difference in seconds is what we need. But if I just say seconds, oh, it's going to get me the seconds in the day. The seconds in the day. So if there are, um, say, 15 hours already for that day, it will simply get me that time, 15 hours in seconds. But if I'm saying, okay, 15 hours already, so how many more hours to UTC? So the number of hours from that point in time, say at 15 um, hours GMT to the time at UTC, so that's basically nine, nine hours up to UTC. That is what total seconds will give us. So get the difference, right? There's already, we have the time already, 1500. That's like three o'clock. It will just get us the number of seconds in that day. That is what seconds will do. Just get the number of seconds in that day. But total seconds will get us the actual difference between that time and UTC. That's what the total seconds will give. So let's see if it is actually the case. So 72,000, just um, let me practice. It's minus. Oh, sorry, guys. I just need to. I just have to remove this for a while just to visualize it. Remove and remove this. Just a moment and get this. Oh. Right, so just want to show us something. Now we see that for New York, it's negative one. That is, it's not even up to UTC, right? So, but how many, how many minutes and seconds do I have so far in that day? So divide this by um the number of um minutes and seconds we get 20 hours we get 20 hours that's why i have this um 72 72000 right but but if i really need so if the time is already say um, 8 o'clock 8 o'clock in New York, right? That's 20 hundred. So what's the time left to get to UTC? That's 24 hours, the full day. It's going to be four, four. So it's the four hours that total seconds will give us expressed in seconds. That's just basically the difference, guys. Okay, so... Um, I'll show us, print TD, 
we see exactly what I'm talking about. 20 hours already in the day. And it's negative, which means um, it's not a, a full day up to UTC, four hours more, right? So if I need 20 hours in seconds, that's going to uh, be the seconds attribute. So I would get 20 hours in seconds. Using my calculator, I'll quickly show us. So 20 hours multiplied by 3,600. So remember guys, 72,000 um, seconds. That's using the seconds param using the seconds attributes. But how much time is the difference from these 20 hours to UTC, to get to UTC, four hours, because we have 24 hours, right, in the day. So how do I get that, the four hours in seconds? I would use the total seconds method. So let's see, guys. Total seconds. So it's negative because it's not up to the UTC. But let's just be sure if four hours actually gives us gives us um fourteen thousand four hundred seconds. Okay, four hours multiplied by three thousand six hundred. So we see that. It's four hours up to UTC. That's it. So, guys, please, I really, um, I, I had to take my time to explain the difference between seconds, using the seconds attribute and calling the total seconds method so that you don't think that they do the same thing in all scenarios, guys. It's going to be a problem when it's, um, negative value that is the time zone lies before utc then you need to be careful whether it's you whether it's seconds attribute or total seconds method all right guys so that's it now finally finally my discussion today i'm going to show us the difference how to calculate difference in time so this time for example, just for example, my birthday and the time now, the difference between the time now and my birthday, okay? So let's see, I'll create two daytime objects and I'm just gonna use, use um, DT now. It's just gonna be daytime dot date time and now I just need it now then get the time zone object tz I want to make it time zone away so tz get tz Africa Lagos okay so this is the time now what about my birthday Still in Africa, Lagos. So DT BD, my birthday. That will be mm, let me use parser. Parser and get the parser method. So my birthday, I should just say 1999. Uh, what month? Okay, April. And what day 14? And what time, it doesn't really matter, just midnight. Okay, so that's it. Now I'm going to assign it a time zone. This daytime object, I'll assign it a time zone. And so as time zone, and just copy this 
provide it as the parameter for as time zone, the time zone object. So I have two date times there. Okay, so um control enter. What does this say? An error uh, takes from one to two position, but three were given. Oh guys, what an error. I thought I was using the daytime constructor. So guys, just make sure it's a string here. We are using the parser, the pass method. So that was just an error there. Okay, so no errors. I'm going to just subtract one time from the other. So the time now, I will subtract my birthday from it, my birthday value from it. So um, time delta, which is what is going to be, re what, that's what I'm going to get when I get you know the difference to the subtraction, difference between two times. I get a time delta because that's a duration. I remember that a duration is simply a time delta. So dt now minus dt birthday, date time birthday, and just grab the seconds all all the time from that time up till now. Remember, not the time up to UTC, the time from that period up till this time. Okay, now let's. See what that gives us. Great. No, TD. So it's 8,000, um, seconds. So I've been alive for 83,916, 3, seconds. By the way, that's not my real birthday, guys. So you don't get it. Uh, we don't get it twisted, right? So uh, what about day? Days. Let's see how many days I've been al alive. 8,765 days. Wow. That's interesting. Okay, so that's it. Now, I can also get specifically the number of days, the number of hours, minutes, and seconds. To do that, I would use the date util module. And um, from there, I'll grab the parser method. I mean, the parser class. Let's see, guys. TD2. Not the parser, guys. The relative delta. So I need to be careful what I, what I pronounce, right? So um, get relative delta class, relative delta. So I know I'm using this class for the first time here, relative delta. And the relative delta class has a method called relative delta, which is like difference used to um, get the difference between two daytime objects, basically. So I'll get the relative, or rather the constructor, the relative delta constructor, to be precise, guys. Relative delta. Then what do I provide? The 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 um, time the date time objects, and that's dt now as one, and then dt bd as the other parameter. So guys, we have a time delta simple. So let's see. C, D, 2. Right. So a relative, it's not a time delta. I need to correct that. It's a relative delta return because we are using a different module. So a time delta is not the same as a relative delta. We don't get these parameters in a time delta. We don't. We don't get these attributes in a time delta. We don't, guys, please. But for a relative delta, you have all these named um, parameters. 
Okay, so I can see that given that I was born in um, April, I was born on the 14th of April, 1999. I am 23 years old, 11 months, 30 days, 23 hours, 20 minutes, 58 seconds or so when this was displayed. Okay, so guys, that's how you can get time difference. Either using, um, the, either subtracting one time delta, sorry guys, either subtracting one date time object from another to get a time delta object, which you can now use to maybe get the days or the number of seconds, right? Or, We'll use the relative delta class of the date util module. And what you get is not a time delta. It's a relative delta object, which has the years, months, days, hours, and blah, 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 you know. So thank you, guys. I hope we um, learned something from today's video. In my next uh, video, I will introduce us to you know oop concepts object oriented programming in python so we're talking about objects and classes you know and all whatnot right so thank you guys for being there i'll see you in my next video have a great day bye